I tried making this a live stream, but I felt this would be a lot better as an edited video where I could contextualize all my points and show off my evidence before I go out there and accuse Hugo Provost of being a total thief. Because Hugo Provost is a total thief. <laughs> Let's get this going. I started the Simple Series back in November of 2016 with the intention of exposing this underlooked series of games that wasn't available in the United States. But some of the titles did make it over to Europe and PAL territories. Now, I'm a huge fan of Earth Defense Force and Oni Chambara. Those are the two simple series games that I felt that if any mainstream reviewers out there would know about, it would be one of those two. So if, if somebody's out there making a review of those two, I wouldn't even give it a second glance. However... I went out and I purchased a lot of Simple Series games and I went through the library to find some of the best of the best wherein I would then cover and make scripted videos on the internet for all to see. Now I did my research. I, I went through YouTube to see if any other people uh, had made some reviews on these particular games. Now when I create a video, I try and go for something more niche and overlooked uh, so I can bring more exposure to them without treading over the same ground. So I, I go for the games that no one else is really covering out there except for maybe a, a few others. But in these particular cases for Yakuza Fury, Splattermaster, Zombie Virus, and I'm just going to throw out uh, Adventures of Darwin. I mean, really, that's probably more mainstream but yes, these three games in particular were something that I had been the first to make a full-on review with research, with uh, all the documentation I could find on the internet, in depth with all the mechanics, not just like a let's play with a voiceover. There's a couple of those out there with uh, Yakuza Fury and Splattermaster, but as far as a full feature length review uh, that goes into all the nuances, uh, yeah, first video content producer on the scene. Now, I don't want to scratch my own back and say that it's completely off limits for all other content creators at this point. It's not. I want people to go out there and play these games. That's why I make these videos so I can build a community that just appreciates these games. It's all about game appreciation at the very end of it. However, it's the timing of things that really bothers me in this whole situation. And it's because I really wanted the Simple Series to uh, be one of my more popular series on my channels. And it's it's not doing terrible, but I mean, it's not my most popular the, in the way that I thought it would be, okay? And that's the nature of uh, reviewing niche games at times. Just some people just, it's too weird or too uh, different or they're not as familiar with it. So therefore, you know, their interest isn't there. That's fine. That's okay. A benefit of being a niche game reviewer usually means that that's, uh, that then becomes uh, something you're known for, you're associated with. Like you, you put out this game that no one else is talking about. And then, uh, you know, maybe the exposure, the traffic comes your way in the end. So like maybe further on down the line in the future, whenever the game finally gets the praise it deserves, uh, they'll come by and check out your review and everything is everything is cool. I'm a fan of Hardcore Gaming 101. I don't I know it's a collective group of different contributors. Uh, not all of them are professional. Not all of them have any sort of ethical code that they adhere to. But it's a little fucking shady and convenient that one particular author goes out there and makes uh, three articles on three games out of a humongous library of cheap budget titles, just handpicks three of them out of the air, and then uh, does feature length articles that cover gameplay mechanics and all that um, on Hardcore Gaming 101. And all right, let me let me build a little background here before I start throwing in throwing in my side, my evidence on this uh, because it's it's purely speculation on my point. But really, I I'm I'm a 
I'm a true believer that coincidences like this just don't come out of nowhere, okay? It's, the world is not that convenient. I'm a fan of Hardcore Gaming 101. I have referenced them once in my video of uh, Disaster Report, like uh, talking about localization differences. I threw up their logo in, during that video and said thank you, and they're crediting them uh, with that information. In the original Japanese version, he's a Japanese male with brown hair, but in the English version, he's a Japanese male with blonde hair. Usually whenever I find any sort of interview or uh, any uh, additional information that I just couldn't find on my own, um, I include like a little annotation like during the video, like an overlay, or I'll just say it verbally where I where the interview came from. Like this is an interview with Dengeki and the creator of X Game. That's just basic. That's just something nice. Um, that's that's the one thing I was looking for during uh, out of all this. Like yeah, I got my I got my information from here. Or <laughs> just just a, a nice little credit, maybe a link to one of the videos that you watched. Uh, because there's a lot of behind-the-scenes work that goes into producing uh, these reviews on the internet. And a lot of people take that for granted. I go out and I beat almost every... I, I think there's only like a couple of exceptions. But I would say 98% of the games on my channel I beat once or twice to get as much information and footage and uh, just to contextualize what the entire game's about. Because a lot of people, when they review games, they just go for the surface level, like maybe the first couple of levels, and they talk about it from there. But many of the games that I play uh, uh, e evolve and develop the game mechanics like further on in the game. And uh, th some, some crazy twists are in there that just pay off if you've invested all that time. And uh, I felt the same way about uh, these uh, Simple Series games. Uh, all of them had some great replayability and you can't just beat them once to know everything there is to know about the games. I'm a little miffed because uh, I, the behind the scenes work took a long time to make those videos uh, because I, I, I spent maybe 12 or more hours just playing the game on each one of those games. Then I wrote all the script and I had all my notes. And then even in the last episode of the simple series, I put together a skit for it because I truly wanted people to enjoy and have a good time with this video series. How I, how I went about finding uh, this guy and his articles on the simple series was just by being a fan of hardcore gaming 101 and reading their articles every day. I just check and see what they post and I learn something new every day. And um, it started back in April 15th of 2017. Now I'll include uh, some screen caps here of the articles. So the first game that he reviewed was Yakuza Fury, uh, volume 72, the Ninjenko. Okay. This is the first, this is the first simple series game that this guy just randomly decided to review. And this is the only time I would have thought this would have just been pure coincidence. And I was going to just leave it alone and just be like, ah, whatever, you know, shit happens sometimes and some people land on the same game. This is about a month, uh, less than a month after I published my uh, Yakuza Fury review, which was like my feature length Yakuza Fury uh, review on my channel. You can watch it. The link's down below. Um, I had a really good time making that. It's one of the funniest videos on my channel just because Kirk's acting. You should really watch it if you haven't. Yeah, so less than a month, on March 24th, 2017, I published my Yakuza Fury video. I went into all the detail I could. I went and played through the entire game four, five, six times maybe. And then uh, I published it with all the information. I was the one guy out there that um, had bothered to film some of the later bits, like the later levels and some of the endings on there and put it on YouTube. This is about, I want to say 10 years after the game released. Okay. So it's been a long time. The game's been out there for a while and just nobody had reviewed it. So then uh, less than a month later, Hugo Provost puts out his article on Hardcore Gaming 101 about Yakuza Fury and covers all the, basically the same information I did. And I was like, hmm, what a coincidence. After all this time, somebody else out there plays Yakuza Fury and does an in-depth review on it, basically covering all the same information I covered. I was just like, what, a, what an odd coincidence. How long had he had been 
been playing playing that game, yada, yada, yada. Has he been waiting? Uh, has he covered any other Simple Series? Did I accidentally rip him off? No, wasn't the case. First Simple Series games, you know, uh, the first one he had ever covered. So anyway, um, I was going to let it go. Didn't say anything. A couple weeks later, on May 1st, 2017, uh, he posts his Splattermaster review. <laughs> and I was like, hmm, Splattermaster, that was the game I covered before Yakuza Fury. Same in depth. I was one of the only reviewers out there. In fact, the reviewer that did cover this game out there, it was just like basically a short little let's play that really didn't go into depth. Had one of the unlockable costumes, like I got an HD video of that on there and one of the additional endings and so on and so forth. And I went into all the nuances, yada, yada, yada. You know where this is going. I even mentioned Splatterhouse, Juan Paku Graffiti, made that connection. And then fucking Hugo puts that shit in his article like he was the one who did all that work by himself. If I were to describe it, it feels like a dollar store splatterhouse that has the comedic and chibi undertones of splatterhouse wanpaku graffiti, which if you never checked out, do it, because it's one of the best Halloween games ever made. I'm a little ticked off because I know out of, out of the entire library over Four generations of consoles of the Simple Series. This guy lands on Yakuza Fury, then Splattermaster. Ten years after the game releases, like months, like a couple months after my, my videos on YouTube. I see this is going to be a trend. So a month passes. He puts out a, another review on some uh, arcade game. And I was like, okay, maybe he heard wind on Twitter. I had a little mini rant on Twitter where I was like, okay, I, I'm a little mad because I, I think this guy's ripping off my videos. Splattermaster, a cutesy-ish horror budget-themed PS2 side-scroller in the vein of Splatterhouse 1 Paku Graffiti. Again, I don't know how you guys find games I haven't heard of but want to play immediately. Yeah, I wonder how Hugo found this one. It's a little more well-known in Europe, since it was actually released there. Did you know that? As a Splatterhouse guy, I should have known this existed. Even if it's a spiritual successor, I need to play more imports, I guess. Right? Can't believe how no one else covered this game until now. That and his Yakuza Fury article just opened my eyes to an unknown realm. On July 13th, 2017, uh, the, the, the final nail in the coffin that just absolutely told me, all right, this dude has watched my videos and he took my information. Uh, I'm not saying he didn't play the games. He probably played the games on his own, but basically used my reviews as a framework and then published his own articles on the fucking website so he he puts out a review of the zombie virus which is my absolute favorite game in the simple series it's the one that i started my simple series review on that i wanted like it was the one game that out of all the games that i wanted to uh expose because i think it's the funnest out of all the ones that i reviewed and he puts out this same kind of hokey hack job recontextualized review uh that that i did and it's disheartening because I remember sitting down and agonizing over writing those review scripts. Like I wanted them to be perfect, concise, and um, be it be a fun time, but also put the games in a be the best possible light because they're on the cheap side of things, and I I tend to have a soft spot for those games. And I remember just agonizing over getting this right and launching this series, and then just to just to have this fucking hack writer come over and just rip it and republish it and not even just give a little nod, a link, or say, thanks, Hikikomori Media, in there at all. And that's that's kind of where I, I dropped uh, my interest in continuing the Simple Series, because I feel like if I do an episode five, if I do an episode five of the Simple Series, uh, I know it, the moment I see uh, Hugo Provost come out there and... Uh, steal another one of my another uh, bit of my writing and this is this is it's hard to as i said it's hard to prove uh because what i do is i create 
video content and video content incorporates visuals, uh, writing, acting, music, gameplay. It's the, the whole deal. And it, it takes a lot of time to create these. And then my writing is like the, it's something out there that not a lot of people can do. When, whenever people start a review channel out there, it's so much easier and non-effort to just come out and just talk about basic bits of the game and never go into the minutia of what makes the game great. So yes, um, I'm a little disappointed that uh, this guy just goes out there and watches my videos and takes, takes the information and repurposes it as his own. It sucks. Um, uh, there's really nothing I can do about it outside of bringing attention to it. So maybe he'll stop. I decided to make this in the edited video so I could contextualize my points. Uh, I hope it didn't come off as heavy handed, unfair. I'm not trying to slander the guy, but uh, I just don't believe in coincidences like everyone else does. Uh, but the information is out there for you to make your own decision on the matter. I just think it's kind of a shitty thing to do, okay? Um, and that's all I have to say on it. I'll see you all next time, hopefully under better circumstances.